Joe, I wish you wouldn't stay in there. I can't do my best when I'm being watched. What the devil do you think you're playing? The burning of Rome. <laughs> well, let's hear it then. Rufus is asleep. Good God. You know, Papa, we gotta face the possibility, you and I, that Jay is drunk somewhere and be ready for it. You're right. Well, Mary's thinking it, though, ever since supper. And she's worried, too, Papa, I can tell. She's got what Jay calls that pursed up look. Shall I go look for him? Where would you look? Well, he used to like those places down off of Market Square. That's lively down there at night, Papa. With the farmers rolling into town and the smell of salt and leather and fresh vegetables and whiskey. If that's where he is, let the man come home on his own. It'll be hard enough for him when he gets here. Uh, you might as well learn, Andrew. It's the way of our women to try to break their men with piety. Or is it the way of our men, Papa, to try to break their women with impiety? I was just asking. I've never been able to decide who I am, your son or mama's. Not everyone has such a wide choice. <laughs> Rufus is finally asleep. Oh, good. He was terribly disappointed that Jay hadn't come home yet. Well, he'll be along soon. You think I've been deserted, Papa? You think my husband has gone off never to return? Will you take care of me again, Papa, if I'm deserted? Will you let me come home and sit on your lap and cry for my lost love? No, daughter. Why not? Because you're never going to be deserted. Oh, Papa, you're always defending Jay. I've always thought highly of him from the first. You would defend Jay to the skies on one hand and on the other while practically in the same breath you'd be giving me reason after reason why I'd be plain foolhardy to marry him. Now, isn't it possible that it meant both things? I don't know how. You learned how yourself, Mary. Is that what I learned? I've taken Jay into the office. Now, that shows confidence. He's teaching himself law. Your confidence is justified. <laughs> That's what I wanted. What? To hear you defend him. Me defend Jay. I could never defend Jay enough. Papa, in these past few months, we've come to a kind of harmoniousness that's so beautiful. Well, I just have no right to talk about it. It's just the gulfs between us, Papa. If I could just fill in all the gulfs, everything would be perfect. Oh, I want life to be perfect, Papa. Now, why doesn't he come home? Andrew, I am ready to see that present now. Well, I shouldn't make you wait for your birthday, Mary. It was meant to be a birthday present. Well, what is it, a new picture you've done? I think you like it, Mary. Yes, Mary. Oh, you've all seen it. <laughs> Mama, we give us a little fanfare for the unveiling? <laughs> she didn't. She didn't hear you, Andrew. Uh, Mama. Andrew wants you to play us a fanfare. Oh. Oh, Andrew, it's Jay. Do you like it? It is Jay. I think Andrew caught a very good likeness. Especially around the mouth and chin. Oh, yes, right through there especially. Uh, the eyes were the hardest. Well, they always are unless the subject sits for you. And I didn't want Jay to do that because you both would have known. I've been making sketches for months. Oh, he wouldn't have done it anyway. Can you imagine Jay sitting still for an artist? <laughs> yes. The picture has great dignity. So's Jay. I love it, Andrew. Thank you. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Oh, I guess we were making a racket. But there's little Rufus. Did Daddy come home yet? No, dear. What made you think so? I woke up. I wanted to show my cap. Rufus, darling, I told you you can't wear that cap to bed. And Hannah will never forgive you. Rufus, come give Grandma a good hug. Oh, nice little boy. Mary, dear, do you think he ought to wear his cap to bed? <laughs> oh, maybe that's Jay. Bathroom? Telephone. 
Oh, come on, Rufus. Let Grandma put you to bed this time, huh? Hello? Hello? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. You'll have to talk a little... I say, I can't hear you. You'll have to talk a little louder. Long distance, all right. Oh, dear, his father's worse. Well, at least we know where Jay is. Yes, that's better, thank you. Yes, this is she. What is it? Yes, I heard. Yes, there's my brother. Where should he come to? Brannock's? Left of the pike, Bell's Bridge. Do you have a doctor? A doctor? Do you have one? All right, then. My, my brother will come out just as quickly as he can. Thank you very much for calling. Good night. Andrew, there's been a... That was a man from Powell Station, about 12 miles out towards La Folle. He said... He says that Jay has met with a very serious accident. He wants, he, he says, he wants, he says they want some man from his family to come out just as quickly as possible and help bring him in, I guess. Shall I get Dr. Decal? He says no, just you. I guess there's a doctor there already. Yes, I guess so. Uh, where do I go? Uh, Powell Station, about I know, but exactly where, didn't he say? Yes, he, um, it was... Uh, Brannix, uh, blacksmith shop, B-R-A-N-N-I-C-K, said that they would leave the lights on for you and you can't miss it. It's just to the left of the pike, just this side of Bell's Bridge. It won't be any longer than I have yes. to. Well, uh, we'll, we'll have everything ready here, you know, in, in case he's well enough to be brought home. Good. I'll phone the minute I know anything. Anything. Bless you, dear. Where is he hurt? He didn't say. Well, didn't you ask? Joe. No. no matter. Where's Mama? She's upstairs with Rufus. Papa, would you would you keep her up there just for a few minutes until I... Make sure Rufus is asleep. Papa, make sure he's asleep. And then tell Mama what's happened. Talk just as softly as you can and still have her know what it is you're saying. Would you like us to go home, Mary? No, no. We'll keep out of the way. It's not that. It's just with Mama, it's, it's so very hard to talk. Oh, for heaven's sake, Joe, I'll go along. What time is it, Aunt Hannah? Uh, it's uh, almost 10.25. Well, let's see now. Andrew drives pretty fast, though not as fast as Jay. But he'll be driving better than usual tonight, and it's just about 12 miles. So that would be now just supposing he goes 30 miles an hour at 12 miles. Um, 30, at 30 miles an hour, um... Um, 30 miles, 30 miles, a half of a half of 30 would be... Uh, oh, I was always so dreadful at figures. Well, it's only 12 miles. We should hear very soon. Why don't we have a cup of tea? Why don't you let me? What? Let me know if there's anything I can help with. Not a thing, thank you. We could make up the downstairs bedroom. Remember, he stayed there when he sprained his poor back. It's better than upstairs, closer to the kitchen and bathroom and no stairs to climb. He's always saying we have to get a bathroom upstairs, but then we never do. Then, of course, if need be, that is, if he needs a nurse, we could put her in the dining room and eat in here, or we could set a cot up right in the room with him and put up a screen, or if, if she minds that, we could put her right on the living room Davenport and keep the door open in between. Don't you think so? Certainly. Of course, there's always the possibility he'll have to be taken straight to the hospital. The man did say it was very serious after all. Would you like milk or sugar or lemons? Oh, my. I don't think I have any lemons, Aunt Hannah. Mm. Well, milk is fine with me. Yes, it's fine with me, too. Would you like some Zuzu's or bread and butter or toast? I could toast us up some. No, just tea will do. Well, here are the Zuzu's. Well, thank you. Goodness sakes, the watched pot. <laughs> 
Mary, I hope you didn't really mind my giving Rufus that cap. Goodness, no. You were good to do it. Well, I'm sure if you'd known how much he wanted one, you'd have given it to him yourself a long time ago. Yes, of course. But Harborson's, isn't that where you got it? I hear it's so tough there. How did you ever dare to go in? Well, fortunately, I'm so blind, I can't see what might hurt me. Now, I just sailed up to the nearest man. I said, where do I go, please, to get a cap for my nephew? And he said, I'm no clerk, ma'am. I'm a customer here myself. And I said, well, then why aren't you wearing a hat? He had no answer to that, of course. Why didn't he tell me? Who? The man on the phone. Why didn't I ask? I didn't even ask. Where is he hurt? How serious is it? Papa noticed. You couldn't think. Is he living or dead? That we simply have to wait and find out. Yes, we have to wait. That's what's so unbearable. Try if you can to find a mercy in it. A mercy? A little time to prepare ourselves. I'm sorry, Aunt Hannah. Oh. You're quite right. I'm going down to see if there isn't something I can do for poor dear Mary. But it's my place to, isn't it, Joan? I don't know as I really want any tea. I just think it would be a good idea to drink something warm while we wait. <laughs> I'd like some. I have decided there is no cause for worry, Mary, dear. Jay is perfectly all right, I'm sure. And Andrew was simply too overjoyed with relief to bother to phone. And he's bringing Jay straight home instead is a wonderful surprise. That'd be like Andrew. And like Jay to go along with a surprise and enjoy it and just laugh at how scared we've all been. Of course, we shall have to scold both of them. Joel. What Andrew is doing is coming in with Jay's poor body to the undertakers. Roberts, probably. Although they do say that new man in Euclid Avenue is very good. But our family has always used Roberts. Did Rufus pick his cap out himself? <laughs> well, you don't think I chose that monstrosity, do you? <laughs> no. First, he picked out a very genteel little surge, but I smelled the hypocrisy behind it. And forgive an old woman, Mary, but I said, do you really like that one, or did you just pick it out to please your mother? He then revealed his true taste, but I was switched about the ball. Either he's badly hurt and will live, or he's so terribly hurt that he will die from it. Maybe after a long and terrible struggle. Maybe breathing his last right now and wondering where I am and why I'm not there. Or he was already gone when the man called. Of course, it's just what we have no earthly business guessing about. And I'm not going to say he's dead until I'm sure that he is. Certainly not. But I'm all but certain that he is. All the same, oh my God, I do beseech thee, let it not be so. And Hannah, would you kneel down with me for a minute, Aunt Hannah? Aunt Hannah? No, Mary. Why? It's too easy. As you say, it's one thing or the other. And no matter what it is, there's not one thing in this world or the next that we can do or wish or guess at or hope or pray that can change it one iota, because whatever it is, is. All we can do now is be ready for it, whatever it may be. I'm trying to be ready. Mary, your beliefs have never been truly tested. God has come easily to you. He's going to come harder now. But if you wait until you can't go on without him, you'll find him. When you have to pray, we'll pray. Goodness sakes, why don't I fix up his room? It's your turn now. What time is it, Joel? 12.45, a quarter to one. Andrew has had time to get down back, hasn't he, Joel? Twice. 
Don't shout at me, Joel. Just speak distinctly. I can hear you. Just think, Joel. It'll be a posthumous baby. Good God, woman. We haven't had a posthumous birth in this family since... Your cousin Letty was posthumous, wasn't she? Of course. Your Uncle Henry was killed in the war between the states. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. Mary. He's dead, Andrew, isn't he? He was dead when you got there. He was instantly killed. Oh. Papa. Mary, sit down. Mama. Sit down, darling. Sit down. Mama. Sit down. Mary. Sit down. Hell, Mary. It's just plain hell. Instantly, Papa. Instantly. Quick as that. Quick as that. He was at this blacksmith shop and they made me look at him. Instantly. This reeking horse blanket and they made me look. I've never seen a dead man before, and it was Jay. Instantly. The flat of the hand. The flat of the hand to death. The flat of the For hand God's to sake, death. Andrew, think the of your sister. It's all right, Papa. It's all right. It's all right. What happened, Andrew? Give yourself a minute, Mary. It's okay. Okay. No, I don't want any of this, Mama. I want to know what happened, Andrew. I have to tell you. Tell her. I can't. I can't be the one. What happened? I don't even know how to begin. Just begin. Where? Anywhere. Well, he, he was alone for one thing. Of course he was alone. I, I mean, there was that. no one else in the accident or I other automobiles. Shay. I'm trying to tell you. What caused the accident? A cotter pin. What is a cotter pin? You wouldn't understand, Mary. You don't know Papa, about automobiles. Please make him tell me. All right. It's just something that holds the steering mechanism together like this. There'd be a hole through these knuckles, and that's where the cotter pin goes, like a hairpin. And you open the ends flat, and you spread I them. I understand. The cotter pin fell out. And then what happened? No one knows. We can't say. He just lost control of the auto. Who found him? The man who telephoned you? Who was that? I don't know his name. I wish you did. He was driving towards town about 9 o'clock when he heard Jay coming up from behind terrifically fast. All of a sudden, he said he heard a terrifying noise, and then dead silence. He turned around and he drove back. Where was that? Just the other side of Bell's Bridge. Where that little angle comes down? That's the place. He was thrown absolutely clear of the auto as it ran off the road. And then the car went up an eight-foot embankment, tumbled back down right beside him, bottom side up, without even grazing him. They think... When this cotter pin fell out, he must have been thrown forward very hard, so he struck his chin one sharp blow against the steering wheel, and that must have killed him. <coughs> Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Jay! Papa, I'll never see him again. I'll never see him again. There, there, there. We're all here. Do it all good. I'll go down home and get some. No, it's, it's in the hall closet. Just get a glass, Andrew. Papa, yes, Papa, yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Help I'll me, try. Papa. Yes, darling, I'll try. Come on, Winnie, will you? Here, 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 Did you? What did he look like? His clothes were hardly even rumpled. His brown suit. He was lying on his back. His face? Just a little blue bruise on his lower lip. Is that all? And a cut so small you can sew it up with one stitch. Where? The exact point of his chin. Exact point of the chin, Father. The doctor said death was instantaneous. Concussion of the brain. He can't have suffered, Mary, not a fraction of a second. 
I asked about that particularly because I knew you wanted to be sure. I saw his face. There wasn't a glimmer of pain in it, only a kind of surprise, startled. I suppose so. It was just that one chance in a million, just that one tiny area, just a certain angle and just a certain sharpness of impact on the chin. <laughs> if it had been one half inch to one side, he'd be alive this minute. Shut up, Andy. Oh, have some Papa. mercy. Have a little mercy. I'm so sorry, Mary. Oh, God, 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 I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. It just so So you knew I say, oh God, if you exist, oh, God damn you, oh, Andrew! Mary, there is nothing to ask forgiveness for. There is nothing to ask forgiveness for, Mary. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, Mary? I spoke to him as if he had no mercy. Oh, Andrew. No, no, God. I spoke to God as if he had no mercy, as if he were just trying to torment me. That's why I asked him to forgive me. All right, now, Mary, listen to me. Our Lord on the cross, remember? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes, and then did he ask for forgiveness. <laughs> he was God. He didn't have to. He was human, too, and he didn't ask it, nor was it <laughs> asked of him to ask it. No more are you, <laughs> and no more should you. You're wrong, Mary. You're very wrong. What was it he said next, the very next thing? <laughs> Father, into thy hand. Father, into thy hands I Father, commend Father, my spirit. Father, into thy hands. Father, into thy hands I commend. Oh, Aunt Anna, you never had anything but God. <laughs> I had a man. I had a husband. I won't have God in his place. Or this picture either, Andrew. I never saw that face before in my life before tonight. <laughs> And eyes and a mouth, Papa, Papa. Yes, baby. Yes, Papa, baby. Papa, please yes, put it away. Yes, darling, put I will. Away. I will. Andrew, I want more whiskey. Mary, let me fix you one good hot toddy. I want a lot of whiskey. You make yourself drunk, Mary. Let me. You tomorrow to think about it. Oh, tomorrow? I want to get just as drunk as I can. Mama always said in times of stress, the best thing to drink was buttermilk. <laughs> 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 what, what are we laughing at? Buttermilk. Buttermilk. <laughs> What's so funny about buttermilk? All right, now we can't. Stop it. Don't you make me laugh at me? I know children, children. <laughs> I have never in my life been so thoroughly shocked and astonished. <laughs> listen. What is it? Just listen. What's up? Quiet, Papa. There's something. I don't hear anything. Mary does. It's in the kitchen. I'll go see what it is. No, Andrew, not yet. Has somebody come into the house? What made you think so, Mama? How stupid of me. I thought I heard footsteps. I must be getting old and dippy. <laughs> it's Jay. Of course it is. What? He's coming to the room with us now. Mary? It's Jay, Andrew. It's Jay. Who else would be coming here tonight so terribly worried and terribly concerned for us and restless? Oh, oh, Andrew, feel his, his restlessness. You mean you can feel it? I mean, it simply feels like his presence. Papa, do you feel anything? I feel goosebumps, of course, but that's from looking at your faces. He's going upstairs You now. gotta stop this, Mary. Quiet, Papa, please. He's in Rufus' room. For God's sake, Mary, darling, you're having hallucinations. Joel, I know that God in a wheelbarrow wouldn't convince you, but Mary knows what she's experiencing. Please stop talking about it, please. It, it just means so much more than we can say. I, I just want to be quiet in the house now. By myself. I got a gal and a sugar babe too. <laughs> 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 